Welcome to another video. For those of you that don't know, my name is Joy LaShawn. Um, and I want you to rate, comment, and subscribe to this video or to my channel, I should say. Um, and now we're just getting to know each other. As you guys already know, I did talk about in my last video, I talked about being a mom. I introduced myself. I told you guys about how many kids I had and all of that good stuff. So disclaimer, please excuse this robe. Um, as you know, when you are a mom, you do everything late at night. So when the kids are asleep, when the husband is asleep, when everyone is asleep, <laughs> that's when you get your time. So that's why I'm here in my robe, my pink robe. After you spend a million dollars with pink, they give you those free gifts. So here we are. <laughs> um, I have my favorite candle burning. I'll show you guys at the end, but I don't know if you can see, it is my Fiji White Sands candle. It's the white burn version from Bath & Body Works. I love the white burn. I feel like the white burn, the white burn, the white burn, it just burns and burns and it just smells so good. So it's Fiji White Sands from um, Bath & Body Works. You have to get this one. Um, I have this one burning, but this is the one that I burned almost completely out, guys. Look. But it still sits on my candle warmer. I have to tell you guys about a candle warmer. It will change your life. You will have a candle for so long. You won't even need another one for a long time. But that doesn't stop me from buying them. So anyway, um, so today I thought we would talk about, um, I thought we would talk about a birth story. So one of the things that people ask me, because I do have seven kids that I birthed, um, sometimes they ask you know like how was your labor or like what was labor like or how did you do it so many times or is there anything that you remember most about your labor or something that kind of stood out so when when we talk about those kind of things I tend to talk about or think about my second born so well you guys know the first baby was a stillborn um and then I have my daughter um my oldest is 19 now and then her sister, her sister is 17 and she's a senior in high school. You actually meet her in my next video. We did some stuff for the weekend. We'll do like a Saturday reset and I'll just show you like bits and pieces of our weekend and then, and you'll meet her. But anyway, so, um, she was born. So what happened with her sister? Um, we had a cesarean section with her. And um, it was cool. It, everything went well. You know, her heart rate was dropping like typically, you know, babies that happens in labor, you know, the heart rate drops. And, and my doctor was really nervous. And he's like, oh, my gosh, we have to get the baby out. And because I had already had, had a stillborn, you know, he was cautious and, and rightly so. Um, he was a bit overly cautious now that I know, you know, I've had so many. I feel like I can deliver my own babies if I were to get pregnant again. But I'm not. <laughs> but I feel like I can do it myself. Um, and I also, I joke with my OBGYN now, like, yeah, you know, I could do this at home alone. And she's like, yeah, you probably could. But anyway, um, so, uh, he was overly cautious, which I, I understand. And so once my, um, oldest, her heart rate dropped a few times, he's like, you know what? It's better if we just do a cesarean section. Your labor is moving pretty fast. We're not sure, you know, if her cord is in the right place and all of that stuff. So my year was 19 years ago. Um, and there was a lot of lawsuits going on, a lot, a lot of malpractice and those kind of things. So got it. Um, so he does the cesarean section and, and that's fine. And recovery was cool. It took about eight weeks, the six weeks, mm, no, it took about eight weeks to do the, to recover and do all of that good stuff. So we recover from the cesarean section and then we of course get pregnant again. And when we get pregnant again, you know, I just told the Lord, I'm like, you know, I don't want to do another cesarean section. I'm like, you know, I was just praying and talking to God like, you know, this time I want to do what's called a VBAC, which is a vaginal birth after cesarean. So I said, I want to do a VBAC and let's see, you know, let, let's do that. You know, so that was our prayer. Um, my husband and I prayed about it and talked to the Lord about it and 
And so we were, you know, when, when our faith says something and we submit that to God, we just sit and wait for it to come to pass. You know, that's, that's faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. So we wait. Um, nine months come, um, after a couple of doctors, we had to switch because they all weren't on board with the VBAC idea. They're like, well, no, you can have a uterine rupture because you had a C-section already. And no, it may not be safe and all of those different things. But we weren't listening to that. We were listening to our faith. We were listening to our prayers. We were listening to what we wanted and what we believe God for. So we stood on that. Um, we stood on that and we waited. Um, we Schedule an induction. We found a doctor willing to do the cesarean section. Great doctor. Um, so we scheduled, not the cesarean, a VBAC. So we scheduled the um, induction. Um, they said it's better that we, you know, get induced, which is fine because all of my babies were like 41 weeks. That 40 weeks we that came and went, um, nobody came at 40 weeks. That 40 weeks was not for me, okay? So um, <clears throat> all of the babies came at 41 weeks. So because she was 41 weeks along or I was 41 weeks along, we had the induction, excuse me. So we scheduled the induction. We go in for the day of, and they say, Mrs. White, you know, um, unfortunately the baby is breech. Breech meaning, you know, she's um, not head down. You know, you have to be head down to go through the birth canal. And they said, she's not, she's upside down. And so we're like, okay, well, let's have a baby. So the doctor's like, no, we don't do breech babies vaginally. You know, you have to have a cesarean section. But we believe God. What do you mean? You know, we were like, uh... so they said, you'll have to have your cesarean section in the morning. You can't be induced tonight. You'll just wait. And now, mind you, me and my husband are like, um, okay. So we listened to what the doctors say. They put us in like an observation room. They hooked me up to the monitors and all that stuff. They said, we're going to transfer you to a room and get you prepared for your cesarean section in the morning. Mind you, we believe God for a vaginal delivery. And that's what we're going to have. And, you know, we're just like, okay, we're going along with the motions. We get put in a room. Um, they close the door. They turn off the lights. They're like, okay, good night. See you in the morning. You know, time for your cesarean section in the morning. Okay. So we go to war. My husband gets on his knees and he prays. I'm sitting in the bed and I'm praying. And eventually I fall asleep. I look over. The last thing I see is my husband praying. I close my eyes. I wake up in the morning to a nurse coming in. She's like, Mrs. White, we're going to shave you and get you ready for your cesarean section. You know, we'll have you in surgery in no time and you'll meet your baby. But I want a, a vaginal delivery and I told God. So I was talking to my husband and he's talking to me and we both kind of whispering to each other and we're like, ask for an ultrasound, ask for an ultrasound. So we get the ultrasound. We ask for the ultrasound and they say, why do you want to ultrasound? Your baby's 41 weeks. There's no change. It's not going to be a change. You're going to have your cesarean section. You're going to meet your baby. But I believe God. So we asked for the ultrasound. We had to beg, okay? We begged for the ultrasound machine. We beg for it to come. Um, so the guy comes, the technician, he's really reluctant. He's like, oh, you said you wanted an ultrasound. Oh, okay, well, I'll go ahead. So he puts the gel on my belly and we're just sitting there. My husband's like, just, you know, looking at me. I'm looking at him intently. I'm like, well, no, we're just going to believe God. So he hooks up the ultrasound machine. He puts the gel on and he's looking and he's quiet. So we're like, hmm. So my husband is peeking over his shoulder and he looks at me and he's like, she's head down. And I'm like, no, what? So I'm like, okay, anyway, they say when the baby is so big, there's no room for the baby to turn and it's not likely that that'll happen. And if they do turn, it's because you had to manually turn the baby or it's just, they just don't turn and it's just the baby has no room to do anything. So it's not likely that she would have turned. But the Bible says that late in the midnight hour, God can turn things around. So the ultrasound tech says, wait one second. He runs out of the room. He goes to get another ultrasound tech. They come in the room. They look. And I asked them. I was really smug. I was like, what's wrong? And they were like, oh, nothing. Um, It just... It just looks like... I, I don't know. It just looks... No, you know what you're looking at. So they're like, it looks like the baby's head down. 
<laughs> I'm like, exactly. She sure is because my God can do anything. So my husband and I burst out laughing. We're like, oh, really? And they're like, oh my gosh, they're looking, they're scanning over her. And they're like, oh my gosh, she's really head down now. Yesterday she was breached. Today she's head down. I'm like, mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So my husband said to me that while he was praying, he heard um, he heard the Lord say that he was turning it around, that he was turning her around, that he caused a deep sleep to come upon me so that I wouldn't feel anything. And he will cause the baby to turn or he caused the baby to turn. So you guys fast forward, they started the induction. Um, it went probably from like seven o'clock that morning all the way to like 11 o'clock at night. I give birth to a beautiful baby girl. Um, and as I'm giving birth, I look over naturally, vaginally, mind you. I look over in the window. I still see all of the things from surgery prep, everything that they needed to prep me for my cesarean section that I did not have. I see all of that stuff, you know, on the window ledge, still unopened, not touched, none of that. Just waiting for my cesarean section right um i just you know i'm just so full when i think about you know how we had to stand on faith and how we had to believe against hope against hope and just believe in spite of you know everything and and thankfully she was healthy i was healthy you know we went home the next day or two she met her big sister their best friends <laughs> to this day um but you know, just standing on that and just being, you know, a mom of just two at the time, well, one, and then bringing her home. It's just, it it just, God continues. And as you hear my story, it's just a continuation of a building of faith and um, just the legacy that he's given us in, in our family building and building our structure. But in that, just teaching us faith, just teaching us to believe him, just teaching us to wait on him. It's just, it just makes me so full. Um, and so I often think about that birth story, but I have others. <laughs> um, and, and I'll share them as, as time goes on. But I just wanted you guys to know, like, if you're in labor or if you're in peril and you're not sure how it's going to go or you're worried or you're concerned, you can trust God. You know, um, it, it's been a journey, it's been a process, but I wouldn't change it for anything. It's not easy. It was never easy. People say, oh, you make it look so easy. <laughs> it was never easy, but it's worth it. And if you trust him, he'll do it for you. So I just wanted to encourage someone. I know this is, you know, we're having fun, we're laughing, and we're definitely going to get into it. <laughs> But in part of getting getting into it, it's learning who I am and, you know, feel free to share your birth stories. Feel free to comment. Feel free to like and most definitely subscribe. But I just want to thank you guys for listening and see you on the next video.